is important for us because this is the budget actually we are having a uh, post pandemic and now we are almost almost a normal you know circumstance after the pandemic that actually had a lot of economic financial and social impact on our lives so this budget hopefully hopefully our panelists will be able to enlighten us on these areas and how these budgets are actually how these budgets are read by experts so today we have uh, two uh, panelists with us uh, I would like to introduce them briefly. We have uh, Professor Dr. Noor Rosli Hamid, and uh, I don't think you need any introduction. However, I would just mention briefly about his expertise. So he, Professor Rosli, is an expert in real estate, and he has been engaged with the real estate industry both at the policy level, the research, and also as, uh, as he regularly writes to various uh, newspapers and also appears and television programs as well. And Professor is the right person for us to enlighten us on the method of pertaining to the real estate development and the real estate industry. And then we have Associate Professor Dr. Sharmila. She is actually an expert in business strategy. And with help of that business strategy expertise, she will be able to enlighten us on the budget and how it's actually going to support small businesses to grow, especially in this challenging environment post-pandemic. So how is uh, forum, how is this discussion going to take place? I'll be asking panelists questions, ultimately. I'll start with Dr. Rosli, followed by a question to uh, Dr. Sharmila, and then again, uh, Professor Rosli, and Dr. Sharmila, so ultimately, I'll be asking the questions. Okay. okay, so sorry, so Prof. Dr. Shabdar, Shabila wants to do a brief presentation before we start our uh, question and answer session. So let me invite uh, Associate Professor Dr. Shabila to do her presentation. Thank you, Dr. Shabdar. Thank you, Dr. Good morning, everyone. You can hear me, yeah? So, um, what I'm, I'm doing right now is really I'm setting a context for everyone, right? Because sometimes when uh, we are looking at something, something as huge as uh, the country's uh, budget, yeah, it's not going to be something that can be discussed in a day or in a in a two-hour session. So, uh, I will try and set a, a context for all of you. So then you, you can attract a, a way forward to what we are talking about. Because when we were talking about this forum, one of the things that uh, our dean was talking about was really how we will benefit the young people. And that's what she just said just now, right? So you guys being the young people, uh, I'm sure you did sit through the budget speech on Friday. How many of you set through the budget speech? Because a 74-year-old man stood for four hours, three hours talking. You know who's the 70-year-old man? Oh, yes, our PMX, right? So he stood there for over three hours talking. So let's sum up. Like, if you didn't go for the speech, let me be PMX part two. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, our our focus uh, really is on the budget of uh, 2024 will empower small businesses. So how many of you are also thinking small business when you graduate? So that's very interesting to know that small businesses were something that uh, our prime minister looked at, right? So. Uh, so that's what uh, uh, Dr. Nizam just now spoke about the total amount of uh, what we call uh, what the Malaysian budget has presented to us, really. It is uh, a total allocation of 388.1 billion. All right. So where, where is all this money? And the question is, can we tap it? So let's look at where the money is. Can you guys 
touch that money. Interested, right? Yeah, so let's go. Yeah, 38, 388. So when he started, when he talked, or when he started his speech, he talked about the post pandemic trouble we are all in, right? You all know that we have post pandemic trouble, right? Cost of living has risen. Yes, so that's what he said. He wanted the budget to ensure MSME. Do you know what MSME is all about? What is the what is the full micro, small, medium enterprise? Right? So he included micro, anyway, micro is part of our GDP also. Right? So he says. Can't we increase the competitiveness? Number one. Number two, why is it we are not looking at our own business capability? We should, isn't it, young people? Yes. Louder, we can get better. Right? Okay. So, he said three things. Of course, his three hour speech is over these three things. But we are only focusing on economic growth, inclusive and sustainable. So he talked about governance, he talked about inclusivity, talked about many areas. So these three areas is themed this way. But because we only have limited amount of time, we will actually now focus on six ways. Six ways on how the budget can empower small businesses, right? So for young people like you who is thinking, it's a good thinking process and I will encourage you to think small business. Can you start a small business? You should. You should. It's your economy, really. We are giving it up soon, isn't it? Huh? It is your economy in the next five years. Number one is lower tax rate for the first 150,000 taxable income. Now, before it was much more, and it was at 17% of the first 600,000. So, this 17,000 has been brought down. Now it's 15,000 on the first 150 earned. Now that is a benefit on MSME. Let me just show you how. Very quickly, yeah, very quickly. The benefit of this is number one, you. It encourages growth of small businesses. So those of you sitting here who did business plan with your lecturers, did business strategy with your lecturers, Small business you study, it encourages growth. Number two, cash flow management. So small businesses, micro businesses already can look at more money in their pockets. So they don't have to give away the money to the government. They can keep it to expand their businesses. Right? Number three is my very favorite word. If you are my student, you'll always hear me say this competitive advantage. Yes. <laughs> All right. What is competitive advantage? Can you imagine national competitive advantage? So, no more are we talking about a company. We are talking about a country's competitive advantage. So, if I ask you right now, what is Malaysia's competitive advantage? You should be able to write that statement down in the next five years. He's given you a method. So competitive advantage for small businesses. I'll show you how their competitive advantage can be developed, yes? And of course, job creation. I don't have to talk about that because when it comes to small businesses, immediate job creation. So imagine you open a business or you're running a small business, you actually help other people as well. Right? Because we're talking about investments and resilience. Another very favorite pandemic word. 
The word resilience was always talked about the moment we all went into lockdown. All right? So some of you are uh, lockdown high school people sitting here. Yes? Am I right? Uh, so you did all your form five, form four, all in lockdown. So you are lockdown uh, high schoolers. Right? So in the two years, we are still lockdown babies or so. Right? So that word re resilience is a very, very important word for young people like you. Because the moment you are resilient, the economy moves. We are stagnating now, but the economy will move. Number two. Now this is very interesting. And this is something you may want to also look at. 1.7 billion has been set aside for micro entrepreneurs. So those of you who are thinking very far in your mind, think again. Micro entrepreneurs, you have money being allocated to you. Uh, I'm not saying this as a talk, everyone, because I'm standing here and talking to you. Guys, this is money given. All right? So there's micro entrepreneur and small business. And there are agencies like our very own Weaver, Benedara, Del Simpanan, Kabon Economy Kumpulan Kusar Niaga, Tekun. Have you heard of Tekun before? How many of you have heard of Tekun? Can you raise your hand? So we all got money. We don't, we never ask your parents' money. So that is our parents. Can? Can ask the code. Okay? So these are the various, uh, what you call, agencies with the provisions. The code has 330 million. DSN, 1 billion. Uh, guys, 1 billion. But of course, must apply that. Uh, must convince them. Right? And the government to fund drive test fees for uh, youths, B40 youths. These are some companies. I've got a list of companies. These are micro, now, now small. They were micro when they started. You can go and look up these people. All right? They are fintech. They have grown. With government funding. Now we look at things like diversification of funding sources. We get more money from different places. So you don't need to go and see in banks, huh? So are you going to ask banks for small business loan? Uh, my advice? Don't. Okay? Don't. Why don't? Because their interest rates are high. They come after you. Of course, the government agencies also must come after you. But at least they understand how cash flow works and how, the, how you should be more resilient over time. Third one. Now the third, the fourth, the fifth, if I'm not wrong, huh? Sorry. The third is green initiatives. So again, the government is giving up to two billion to support sustainable technologies. I'm not going to go into sustainable technologies because I'm only setting a context for you. Because some of you may even look at R&D innovation. Universities like IUMW, you are our R&D, you are our research. And some students may be involved in senior lecturers on grants by the government. Are there grants given by government on research? Yes. If you want to be involved, can you be involved? Yes. And who do you speak to? Your senior yes. All right. So, of course, we talk about R&D, cost reduction, market expansion. See the word resilience? Now, the next few, I'm just going to very quickly go through because they are all digitization. You get money for digitization. So, number four is for business digitization. Number five, food. Are we having a food security issue? 
Yes. Can you go back and become farmers? Better. Okay? Better. Because you're very agitated and you know what to do. All right? And number six is Paddy. Have you heard of Paddy? Pusat Economy Digital Kluwanda, Malaysia. Do you know we have such a thing? Ah. Yes. Paddy has asked to help small business owners. Don't go only to banks now. Yeah? Banks cannot give all of us money. And she says, let, the, let people like Teddy do it. So if you're interested in ICT, communication technologies, application software, go to Teddy. Right? So these are some of the reasons we want to use technology. Okay, like I told you, I'm only setting a context for you, just to think about it. Not that you remember all this, no, no, no. Just set a context. Young people, the message that I think, and I, I think a young W, again with me, will stand a small business generation. Think about it. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sharmila, for your presentation. I'm sure we have actually learned many things about the budget that we have not come across because we are busy. And even when the budget was presented, maybe you are in class. I was, actually, I was driving and listening to the budget part of it. Okay, and then, yeah, some of us had other, other engagements. All right. So thank you so much again, Dr. Sharmila. So we are going to ask uh, some questions from our, from our panelists. So I just ask the first question to uh, Prof. Rosley. So, from, so this year, the real estate transfer documents involving beneficiaries relinquishing rights to eligible beneficiaries according to a bill for a right for the Partition Act 1958 that it is proposed to only be subjected to a stamp duty of 10 ringgit. So how is uh, this change in stamp duty uh, going to help uh, the industry? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, thank you, Dr. Nizam. Right. Um, so this year, for the real estate industry, we feel a bit <laughs> it's not not many uh, incentive people to our sector compared to previous year. Do you know why? What's the reason why government didn't give a lot of incentive to the real estate sector? No idea. Because you are rich, really. We make we make for well, the thousand of cars of money. No, uh, actually, uh, the property market is just beginning to improve. After the impact of the pandemic, therefore the government decided not to stop or to disturb the organic growth of the property market. Right? So you can see that this year is the first year ever that there is not much uh, physical uh, planning which impact the physical uh, 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 policies or formulas which give a huge impact to the property market. So the government decided to go to the, the what we call the less important uh, issues. Uh, for example, the one that uh, asked by the minister just now. Yeah. Talking about wheel. <laughs> yeah, to Ramanti, we meaning the wasiat. Yeah, for those uh, who have a wheel. Okay. Uh, for those who write wheel or wasiat to their. Uh, as the children, right? So uh, this time, government give a flat rate of ten ringgit. It's usually a fixed. Uh, we can consider as a fixed uh, tax. Previously, you have to pay based on the value of the properties. Okay. So this time, government say, okay, fine, because there's nothing else to give the to the, to, to, to the rakyat. So perhaps this will help the rakyat to get something from this budget. So, uh, we have to. Uh, 
we have a lot of these uh, uh, pro uh, problems regarding uh, wheels which have not been solved because the whoever uh, the beneficiary they don't have enough uh, fund to pay for the tax. So with this this book, sorry, uh, this is a government book that the issues of uh, pending cases of wheels can be uh, settled by settled by the uh, whoever with the uh, the, the properties. So um, a flat rate of time again you have to pay for, for, for each uh, instrument, transfer instrument uh, to be a process for this purpose. So that is not much. <laughs> right. Thank you, Prof. It's good that we know that years, years, and sector is doing well. So it is a good news, Prof. Thank you so much. And also we already know why this time there are actually little less emphasis in the budget on this sector. So now I would like to ask a question to Prof. Uh, Sharmila. The small businesses often face challenges in accessing financial resources. So how does the Malaysian Madani Budget 2024 address this issue and also promote easier access to funding small business owners and entrepreneurs? Thanks, uh, thanks, Dr. Giza. Uh, actually, uh, okay, I think this will interest some of you. This will interest some of you because uh, I think I should stand that side, yeah? I think so. so. Okay, right. I think this will interest young people, right? Uh, I, I actually read up a few just now, right? So let me tell you, so you probably want to know. Number one is, of course, just now we talked about the tax rate for small businesses has been reduced. Now the 2% is a huge reduction. You can ask for our finance lectures. How huge that is. Number two is the Samara Niaga 2023 program. Now the Samara Nyaga, again, it's all on the net. If you actually just click on it and you go into it, they actually tell you the process. Alright? So they actually say that the program for SMEs and micro enterprises will provide up to 45 billion ringgit. Okay, I mean, it's Samara Nyaga 2023. Number three is 20 million ringgit of SME loans will be guaranteed by the Sharikat Jaminan Pembiayaan Perniagaan. So it's called SJPP. Once again, my advice to you is, even if you're not interested in small businesses, is to consider looking at it. Number three is the local startups in innovative and high growth industry to receive investment from the Malaysian sovereign funds, Hazana National. All right, and that is up to 1.5 billion. So, in me just talking to you right now, we have nearly uh, 70 billion allocated to small businesses. I need overall spread out, huh? All right, I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shamira. So uh, my, I would like to ask our, so before that, so now we know total of almost like 70 billion uh, allocation in the budget for small businesses. And this is quite a, I believe it's a significant, significant number, up from, probably up from the previous year. So now let me ask uh, this question to Prof. Rosli. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I, because I have translated some from the from Malay English sometimes. Okay, so this Madani Budget 2024 uh, proposes to impose uh, scale duty at a flat rate of 4% on instruments of transfer ownership when people want to transfer ownership of real estate. Uh, this is by citizens and uh, foreign owned companies. So, how is this? What is the significance of this change and how is this policy probably different from the previous policies? Okay, 
Okay, this time I don't want it. Alright. Uh, this year, government introduced the four percent flat rate, right? Flat rate for uh, uh sales transfer to Bangladesh uh, for those uh, not in Malaysia. So, is there a huge impact on these issues? Do you think it has a huge impact on this? But this is this uh, flat rate four percent. Yes. 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 However, if they want to do business, then they perhaps they can also provide a pressure of profits. Okay? So, what are the limitations for this? Uh, this uh, first point is just property in Malaysia. Land is paid matters. That's very important in Malaysia. Although we have a, we call it Malaysia, but land is only state matters. Meaning, uh, let's say suddenly we have a place which is opposition. Kelantan Tegado is which is not similar uh, policy with the government, central government, which is from other parties. So they can formulate their own strategy. Right? So to curb this, <laughs> to curb this and to unify, to make a unit committee in terms of tax, then uh, federal government decided to impose this 4% flat, flat rate tax to any purchaser which involve uh, foreigners. Okay? Uh, if foreigners decided to purchase property not for MM, do you know what is MM to dish? Yes, did. <laughs> Anyone know you? MM to dish? Malaysia, my second home. That means again, for my son, meaning those pensioners from other countries who decided to reside here to do their retirement uh, here in Malaysia, they can do so. Right? So that's why we have a lot of uh, investors from Japan, from Korea, who live who, who occupy properties in Mount Kiara. Do you know where is Mount Kiara in here? This is nearby us, Mount Kiara. So the huge, you can see that the development there like of Hong Kong, RYC development. Mostly 50% of the owners in Mount Kiara is from the Japan, Japan Korea, and most uh, in other uh, yeah, foreigners who decided to uh, reside in Malaysia. Okay, the policy, the first policy is that if you purchase property not for mm 2 cash purpose, you can only buy properties minimum value of 1 million and above. 1 million. That is standardized throughout all states. So, color this policy we impose, which is a 4% flat rate tax, which is it's really they are paying 4%. So, there's not, no, no, nothing in my account. So that's why we say this is nothing like the product of the there, right? Then they are paying, so if you are aware that uh, uh, stamp duty tax is based on ad valorem, ad valorem meaning based on value. The first 100,000 you have to pay 1%, the next 100,000 to 500,000 you have to pay 2%, 500,000 to 1 million you have to pay 5, uh, 3%, and above 1 million you have to pay 4%. So in this case, the foreigners are already paying 4%. So that's what we say. That's nothing new to the real estate. But, however, however, for those who want to purchase property under the MM2, my Malaysia, my second home, uh, the state can decide like this. They may well have to decide like this. So, for example, Kelantan, Perlis, Kuala Pinang, foreigners can buy properties. Which value uh, at the market value of minimum 500,000. So, this case, yes, then they are subject to pay 4%. If not, they will, uh, they will fall under the category of 2%. So, this is where I think it's very small impact to, 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 to the community or to, 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 to the industry. Okay? And for those who want to purchase a product and I in Perak, Perak is a very, uh, very narrow case. They can buy properties at a price of 350,000. Very little And in Sarawak, 300,000. So to cut this, as the government said, 4%. Right? At least get something, uh, they pay more tax for the for purchasing that uh, property. 
So, uh, overall, for us in the industry, we feel that we feel that actually, again, that it's not much impact. Well, but we don't have many numbers of uh, Malaysian master at home uh, people who, who stay here, right? What are the numbers of about 20,000, 20,000 people, right? compared to those who purchase for their for, the, for other purposes, which they like to pay 4%, which is what I pay now. So no, we just no, we don't like to change from that. There are no, uh, uh, no uh, impact to the property market in terms of the 4% rate better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Um, so now, uh, for as for Prof. Ross's Prof. discussion, so we learned that for this 4% flat rate is actually not expected to have uh, any significant effect on the property uh, industry. Okay, so let me pose a question to Dr. Sharmila. So innovation and technology adoption uh, essential for growth of small businesses in today's digital age. So can you elaborate on the budget strategies uh, for encouraging technology adoption and digital transformation for small businesses? Uh, so once again, it's addressed to all of you, is you cannot keep away your screen time, isn't it? Right? So your screen is so important to you that even while listening, you're on your screen. Right? So this is addressing uh, young entrepreneurs who still want to look at your screens, even in a new business. So when you're talking about um, screen time, we cannot always say just young people are more screen time based people. We all became that way when there was a lockdown. We all bought our things, our groceries, everything. Even our medication, our medicine was brought home to us. Wire grabs and your lava moves and all these people, right? So it is this emerging from this that today, our Prime Minister has looked at how digitization can actually be a pervasive type of a uh, move. So what he actually said is that because 79% of MSMEs consist of micro businesses, all right, the government has now promised additional 100 million in matching digital grants. So that's the amount of money for digitization of businesses. And if you remember just now, I, I went through the three areas which was digitization. I just provided the context. But number one, that's the amount of money you have. Now the next is of course, full digitization of businesses. Again, the government has an allocation of 400 million. Actually, to be very honest, these amounts are very small. Huh? When you say 79% of MSMEs are there in this country, and you say for full digitization, you have only this amount of money, it's still very low. We are at only an infancy when it comes to digitization. Our level of digitization is very, very small. All right? So, opportunity. Uh, this is opportunity. Young people, yeah? It's for you to think about how your screen time, that you go looking at TikToks, right? And your Instas and Facebook. I say TikTok because we young people look at it, right? How can you capitalize so you can have TikTok shops? No, huh? that's not digital runner. <laughs> the government is going to curb that. All right, your digital shops, your TikTok shops is going to be a problem in the future, perhaps. Okay, so that's not what we, they meant. They meant digitization as, for example, your grabs and your emailings and your e delivery. So I hope that helps answer that question. Thank you.
Thank you, uh, thank you, Dr. Shemela, for that enlightening answer. So now we will ask our. Well, this is the final round of questions. I'll ask a question to Prof. Rossi, and then one more question to Dr. Shemela, and we open the floor to you to ask some questions as well. Okay. We have this question to Prof. Rossi. So additional allocations in budget 2024 allow more affordable houses to be built to meet the housing needs of low-income uh, individuals. And the government allocated 2.47 billion, 2.47 billion, to implement the but implement the public housing project for the for next year. So can this uh, initiative help Malaysians own their homes? <laughs> The that about 2.47 billion sounds very huge. Okay? Right. Do you think it 2.47 billion? How many how what's the number of units that you can buy? You can build from that number. Any idea? Let's say let's say we think for hundred thousand per unit, right? So I call about thousand thousand because you have to take consideration. Cost, land, construction, uh, professionals, and so on, so on. So we get about hundred thousand per unit. So two point four seven billion divided by hundred thousand, which would only uh fifty five thousand units, right? So what is about fifty five thousand units? Okay, okay. Remember earlier I told you that land is state matters. So okay, so the government can plan anything. The federal government can plan they want to work with 25,000 units to provide for those who really need it. That's uh, the uh, low income group side. But the land, where to work with property? So the federal government has to negotiate with the state to get the land to build the house. Am I right? So the process of the negotiation to get the, the land will take about the take about what? Well, six months, one year. So, okay, that is negotiation process. How do they go to get the land? Once you have, you made the category, you may get, uh, you may get uh, government, but the government identified that, yeah, we need to book these type of properties in Slangon. Uh, because uh, Grand Valley had a huge uh, problem, uh, those who are affordable to, to book these part of affordable housing uh, homes for the uh, low income groups. Okay. The federal government has to negotiate with the state government to get the land first. And then they have to go for the process of planning application. The planning application process minimum is six months. Right? Minimum, that's just the application planning process. Then you have the, uh, another few few months more to finalize the legal issues, to appoint your contractors, and so on. The construction of houses will take you about minimum of two years. Right? Total spend to complete the unit, uh, to complete the project is about three years. So, although government plan down to implement state at the bar, uh, they, they, they pass the budget, this budget, for, uh, to, to start to kick off next year, the outcomes can be only get, can be filled by the by the riot in three years. Right? So meaning that is nothing. <laughs> so nothing impact to the industry uh, or this 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 planning, right? Because the process, the process to put houses in one take uh take longer time, take more three years. So overall, I think it's a good move. At least government has some ideas to help you. You uh, do, uh, I will help you that uh, you are not under that category of uh uh the pattern that they B40, right? So this is more to be 40 so meaning that the government uh, plan to, uh, to build these type of houses, plan it up, rent to own policy perhaps by the state, or rent to, uh, you know what is rent to own? Meaning you rent the property first for a few years, 10 years, then it will be yours, but you have to pay market value at the time. Okay, then we have that RO, RTO, rent to rent, uh, rent to own, and the banks also. So this is a this is a good project moved by the government. To make sure that in three years' time, meaning once those who are now in year one, once you graduated, then the property is there for you. So you are the right target for them, but, but not for those who are looking for the property immediately. 
Okay, so uh, that's more or less the uh, answers to the question. Thank you. Prof, I just uh, one question that runs in my mind. Now, this 2.4 billion, can they perhaps do this possible for them to refinance the existing law, basically, existing house, low cost house, housing? Refinance. But remember the keyword states for the Batarenda, we need to have house. <laughs> Again, that the government has set aside. Now, one thing that he talked about is training and development program. Training and development program for young employees. Again, the, the government has allocated money and young people, that's what Mokrosi was saying, young people like you who go out after you graduate and you start working, right? You are entitled these kind of training programs, and I think you already know that it's already an initiative that has been done. Now, he also talked about supplier diversity. There's a lot of, a lot of time our supply chain management, especially in Malaysia, is always controlled by a certain company, a certain group, a certain, uh, the value chain is always within a very narrow span of group of people. So that's why we hear people who are in their uh, M40s or their B40s and things like that. They're all there and they're all stuck. At one point of time, we will become a stuck economy. We can't progress. Why? Because of the word inclusivity and diversity. So we even talked about progress to a budget to support and promote diversity within supply chains. 
So actually, when you're looking at supply chain, when you have to look at organization logistics, how supply chain works. All right. The third is workspace and technology. So I think uh, a lot of us, as lecturers, we have nearly over one and a half to two years worked from home. All right. And our home became our workspace. And thus, again, it becomes where technology is so pervasive. So he talked about that. So it's no more just technology for certain groups of people, technology for everyone. And of course, he talked about community engagement, involving the community and benefiting underprivileged people. Again, these are general terms, all right? They are all very general, but what he's trying to say really is that Every time we do something and we move forward, ensure that everyone is included. So these are some of the things. They were not specifically uh, inclusivity and diversity, 100 million. And that's not how it works. Because inclusivity and diversity are concepts that we must bring into our own work spaces. So I hope that that is okay for everyone. Thank you. Okay, so with this we have, I have actually concluded the questions from our community. So now we will open the floor to your lesson to ask any questions that you have on the things that we have discussed or perhaps something that is in your mind regarding the modern budget 2024. Lecturers as well can ask questions. Students, yes. Uh, so my name is Ali Dabiyeti, and I'm not from Malaysia. I'm from Malaysia. I'm from Malaysia. I'm from Malaysia. I'm And uh, my question is uh, just, uh, it's much more, I wonder, because uh, I've seen the budget allocation in Malaysia. Where the people were talking about it and saying that it never happened before. And uh, the thing that shocked me most is that uh, Malaysia's uh, economy is doing a bit bad. Uh, the ratio to debt and the GDP is uh, going, going to pass 64 percent, coming from 62, which is still acceptable, but like, it is going bad. And I, uh, I thought that. For like implementing uh, or giving allocation for uh, this um, MS, MS industry, I thought that uh, investing in, in huge, uh, huge public companies which will be like a, a much more secure options because um, uh, they're going to invest, they're going to invest in R and D, they're going to hire more people, and this will definitely increase the economy rather than going for the MS. MSME's uh, option, which can take time and uh, uh, it's not sure to be great. Which I do believe that, uh, you know, like uh, it's a great option, but uh, maybe it's tough times and it could be difficult or risky. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think it's a very thoughtful question, very important question. So, the question, if I may summarize, I'm sure that I just have kept all the question as well. So the question is about emphasis on the small businesses, the MSC, and MN, like medium, micro, small, and medium enterprises. Is it the right approach, or will it be more viable and more significant if we actually focus on all these studies and entities who have more resources to be able to give some significant things to the company? If I can start by answering that question, and uh, let's see if, for example, uh, Proposti they want to add. Uh, you see, the yeah, uh, the economy is like an engine, right? You have certain performers, and you have to push. Uh, the the engine needs to push. So that's, and, and to be very honest, we focus, this particular forum focused on MSME. That, that, that does not mean 
that the, the public companies and things like that are left out in that investment. What we were focusing and this forum that we focus is to look at opportunities for their tax. You were right because it's not that the economy is doing not so well. The economy is doing very badly. Right? And to be very honest, if you don't start an engine, like what Professor Rosley was saying, if, for example, when graduates like you come out and there are no jobs and there are no whatever things, you will be the ones who are in trouble. So our focus in this forum is on starting the engine. That's that's how we look at it. What do you want to do? Thank you. Uh, to add on what, what to say is right. So actually, government uh, faces it to two to places. First one is developing the SME uh, act as a to the small. At the same time, government is doing uh, searching for investors. If you can see that past few months, our PFS went to all these uh, country, Arab countries, so yeah. So they're trying to get FDI, FDI, foreign direct investment here. Yeah. So hoping that from FDI is to bring in a uh, huge industry and huge job of this job to the vision. At the same time, not not all uh, uh, regions can be absorbed in this type of industry. So they want you to do to think about uh, they want to have your own small business to start with your business. So we have two two, two pieces of our uh, uh, development approach by the government, which I think is is is, is good, right? Giving opportunity uh, more opportunity to people to start to start their own business. As well as uh, also get investors from overseas to, to come in and also do their parts. Okay. Okay. Any other students? Yes. Uh, sir, I have a request in but in a B forty perspective. B40 perspective, yeah. Okay, let's say, uh, sir said the budget of 2024 will be fully executed in 2027, like, like estimation like three years, four years in front. Let's say a B40 person who want to invest, but they are scared for the higher cash flows because of SME, but they have a decision of investing in real estate. Which is the better option? Go for SME first or Keep the money, say we go for the 2027 investment because we never know, right? The 2024 allocation, how it helps the P40 community. So, what's uh, the advice for them? Good question. So, there's two, there's two, two, two part in your patients, right? One is whereby you, uh, the P40, do investment, right? What, what investment? Uh, so we get away by the they are doing the business, right? So <coughs> right. Actually, if you if we say that this B40, B40 is for those who income for less than four thousand and less four thousand, right? So yeah. let's get a lot of space. We give example in, in uh, for copy. Okay, right? If you uh, uh, earn less than 4K, you are urban poor. <laughs> so with 4K, do you think that they can do investment and buy properties? <laughs> because the the under uh, let's say the median the, the median the median price uh, property is about two hundred fifty thousand, two hundred thousand already can buy one property. If you want to purchase this type of property. Right, you have to have a, a upfront about 25,000 deficit. Right, so you think that the people, uh, uh, like that? So that's that's uh, that's that's where whereby the government is like B40 at the, at the beginning of their career, they should just rent, just be uh, just rent, rent the properties. You don't need you don't buy the properties, you don't have to pay back. To pay the bank, to sell the bank. So if you rent, what you are just pay about two hundred to the three hundred per month, right? The balance of your income, then you can do a small SME, right? So this that's the, the strategy, the government strategy is to encourage everyone to to, to, to involve in this SME. Okay. So 
So I think yeah, this is the best. <laughs> okay. uh, actually, if you look at it, at the point of D40, we won't advise them to invest. Investment will not be their, you know, if it's a finance scheme, huh, you won't tell them invest. You'll tell them work towards building a, a future. So that's, that's the more of it. Huh? So you won't look at anything except affordable homes, which, we say, which is what 2027 can be. Okay. You have any other question? Okay, so we have an, another question here. So, thank you. <coughs> okay, okay. So, my question is FOB is suffering financial damage in the premiership. So, what are our direction or action in leveraging the grants offered by the government entities, such as the code and etc.? That is my question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so basically, he's asking how the faculty of business will help uh, enhance this kind of the Tekon and Samara and other. Now, what we can do is really to just help you if you have the interest. Who got the interest? <laughs> Looks like all me only got the interest. All already, I cannot. Put up your hand and then come here. See here? We. We. Help. Help because we want the code. Help us. Ah. So that's actually the, the direction cannot be we form something pull in the resources and then all of a sudden nobody wants to do it. The moment you guys start an interest, there will be a direction. And of course, uh, the, the budget just came out on Friday. So maybe uh, it's a good idea. Maybe there must be an entrepreneurship club. Uh, I'm not the dean, huh? I simply talk, uh, you talk. Sorry. Yeah, I think it's a good idea, I think. Uh, perhaps we can have these uh, uh, priorities or activator clubs for those who are interested to, to uh, embark on this type of business. We, we can help, we can guide you. But you have to, the, the interest should be from you. You cannot be top bottom, it's from you. See. Once you have, you say, okay, I'm not really interested to do this one. Right? So then we can help you to get the outer to help you to do the cash flow and everything, apply for the so it's good if you in early stage before you graduate, you plan now. <laughs> Your lecturer is here to help you. And once you are graduated after this, we say, um, Sonia, you can't be busy. <laughs> okay, so use your time here while you're here. Right? Take the opportunity. Right? Study, study, but at the same time, plan your future. And have your own company right? before you graduate. Just one more thing, yeah. The group has been there for quite some time already. Yeah. Ah, and students have applied. I know when I first started working in the Nigerian family, there were two young people who applied to the code. And I remember they couldn't come for class because they could to go for interview. Then they had to present them. So it's a very interesting journey. You see, you can look at it. And then, like, when, like what Prof. Rosti said, yeah, when it comes to cash flow, and all, we, got, we got experts here to help. Uh -huh. Okay, so we have another. Uh, uh, my name is Lewis, and my question is regarding the grant given to MSMEs. Because uh, just now you mentioned about the grant being around 100 million, is it correct? 100 million towards SMEs, MSMEs. And you mentioned also the talking about this uh, being that company. So my question is that, is there any action taken by the government to target any specific industry with this one kind of need? Because you mentioned also that most of our that SMEs tag category is just micro entrepreneurs, right? So is there any part, like, specification that you try to 
foster with this 100 million, which is quite a small budget as well. Uh, okay, uh, yes, it's not, it's not 100 million, sorry, I think 70 billion. Yeah, yeah, it's a different, different. You see, what happens is exactly what Prokosi said as well. See, when we give the money, it's not just kept in the Prime Minister's lock under his lock and key, it's given to ministries. So, ministries have their own KPI. For example, uh, micro entrepreneurship in agro uh, agriculture. So it's the Kementerian Pertanian and, and you know, that, that would look at those kind of things. And then when they need the money, and you need the money, you go and apply for grants under them. So these kind of things are actually given up. When I say digitization, for example, it doesn't sit as only digital. So it could be digitization and food security, for example, or digitization and what, uh, for example, um, welfare, whatever. So it goes to the different ministries. So that's what the federal does. And correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, because each ministry as such, they have their budget, which part of it will belong to me. Okay. Okay. So we will have two more questions from the from the audience. Azamin has a question. Okay. As I move from uh, the Ministry of Peace. Okay. Uh, before I proceed with my question, uh, I, I think uh, we, uh, we have very good students uh, with us uh, today because uh, I can see that uh, we get quality questions and, and we see that uh, they are eager to participate and, and actually practice what they are, they are uh, learning. Uh, the idea when we uh, started this effort to, to have this forum is uh, to promote the students uh, to tell you that hey, uh, your learning experience is not confined within the classroom. So you need to, to be uh, resourceful, you need to, to be aware of what's going on outside uh, and, and so on. Uh, so what I can say is that uh, yes, we can have uh, Business venture incubators, we, we can uh, invite uh, agencies like. I think, uh, maybe, yeah, we can invite the call, but perhaps we can, we can also look into uh, higher value uh, agencies like MPDC, uh, Malaysian Technology Development Corporation, we can look into Cradle and so on. Because uh, uh, at the end of the day, we would like our credits not to be uh, low, not, not in degenerative sense, but we don't want you to be uh, low value uh, entrepreneurs. We want for you to, to, to be uh, involved in higher value economics. Okay, uh, that's one thing. Uh, so to proceed with my question to the panel. Uh, be before I go into the, the question, uh, I would like again to recommend the students to follow uh, Hazana Research Institute. Uh, in, in your social media, uh, I'm aware that we have LinkedIn and Facebook. Yeah, we, we are of Generation X and above. So uh, I'm not aware if they have, uh, I don't know, uh, Instagram, TikTok, or anything, but not. Okay. One, if you look into uh, the papers produced by Kazana Research Institute, they have been saying that um, we have a mismatch between the graduates we produce and the job market, meaning to say the job market is it offers more uh, low value or rather low skill jobs, uh, whereas we are producing more uh, skill uh, skill manpower uh, in terms of graduates and so, and so on. So that's one thing. And the other thing, um, Dr. Ong Tan Min, uh, when uh, he was the deputy minister, deputy minister for uh, when he did. It launched the 4IR policy. Uh, he said that uh, Malaysia went into deindustrialization too soon. So we should have developed more on, on our industries. Um, so, with, with those two uh, statements and the budget itself, uh, do you see when we see our economies moving on? Are, are we getting into the higher value? 
under the economics of because uh, let's say if we take uh, the real estate industry for example we have been very slow we have uh, been embracing industrialized uh, building system very late decades after it was introduced so in terms of adoption of technology uh, increasing the, the, the value of autonomous nation is, is quite slow in, in that sense so uh, with that do you see with the budget we are getting any better and what does it take for Malaysia to be of that higher value to me? Uh, so I, I, I open the question to, to any manner or even uh, lecturers or even students who, who are to keep in. So uh, you're welcome. Okay, uh, just to sum up uh, what uh, Peter Zarin has said. Whether we are moving at high value economy, um, not yet, huh? not yet. We have some, we were moving, but the lockdown has actually affected a lot of things. A lot of uh, foreign companies have left on the shores. A lot of uh, foreign investments have pulled down. And we are actually starting on the low level economy at this point of time. I'm not saying that high value, and, and that was emphasized just now. You say you have to focus on high value economy, high value entrepreneurship, and not just focus on selling a product in the market. So at this point of time, just to, to, to emphasize, we have not reached that guys. Yeah? We are hoping that it will it will take a couple of years, okay? Whether we like it or not, because we are uh, as an economy, we are very very dependent at this point to China, okay? Our our and as China is suffering, and I think you know that China is suffering. Their consumptions are low. Their movement of their money is low. Even their property market is low. It's kind of hitting on us. So at this point of time, young people like you should be the one who should focus on high value economy. And, and that was one of the things that we focused on, digitization, looking at how uh, IOTs, right? How artificial intelligence, how those kind of things can be pushed into the economy. So, uh, Incha Azami, if, if I can answer your question in a very short sentence, it would be no. We are, we are still, we have, we have just started. We just pushed open the engine of, of, of uh, growth. So, I'm assuming and I'm passing to my colleague that we need to actually push this to high value. Digitization, IoT, big data, these are all part of high value. I'll pass to my colleague. Okay. Uh, the, the, you, you made a point just now regarding the Fazala studies. You, you, should, you said that the, the, the university produced a student which is a high quality compared to the industry which pay them very low. Because, right? Okay. You can see that actually the industrial market mostly is, they have not uh, moved forward yet. But for us in education, if you are aware that we have to do the curriculum review every five years to see what the market want. And we actually, the, what we, the market want is not just what our current market want, we also compare it with the global. So that's why in education, our, our education system, uh, uh, the syllabus is much more uh, ahead compared to the industry itself. So the industry is very slow paced. Why we didn't move fast? Because it will, uh, it will involve cost. When, when it involves more cost, we go back to the people. With the, with the salary of uh, minimum uh, wages of 1,500, so I don't think that the industry uh, afford to have this high tech uh, uh, high end uh, product, right? which the cost will be much more higher, unless the salary uh, would uh, increase. That's what I think what's the government doing now. Right? They want to increase the salary, but they're talking about salary uh, in service uh, to the government. 
hoping that the private sector will follow. So by having a higher income, then you can plan for the rest. You know, like, you know, the industry, the industry will follow because you know that okay, the, the cost will be factored into this. So now we now we experience right the, the cost of living is quite high. Why the sudden the sudden increase? Because of because of what you get the pandemic. But another thing is that our we cannot produce what we need out of consumptions. So we really rely more on import uh imports products. So this is what the impact. Right? So anything happened in Chopin, for example, what uh let's say just now China busy problem, we will this problem also. Anything happened in uh in US we also will feel will, will the pitch. Right? So because we import a lot. That's why by having this uh, small SMD, we think that we can produce our own needs by the people, from the people, the, from the people, by the people, right? Yeah, it's to the people itself. So, good luck, my question. Okay, let me also add on some thoughts there. Now, normally the high value, if you look at the high value economies, we need to see where this high value is coming from. So what is the source of high value in any investment in any economic activity? So high value comes from things like innovation. And if you look at the budget, there are some elements where the government is actually proposing to emphasize on innovation. So it goes through innovation, we will be able to be more efficient. And efficiency results in the high value. So another aspect of high value is coming from governance. You know, governance. Why, for example, some of the companies, their brand value is so high because we have trust in them. They have a very strong image. And that's coming from actually governments. And if you look at this budget, there are actually specific initiatives that government has allocated on things like ESG, you know, sustainability. And sustainability also is something that actually creates high value because people now value environment, they value the source, the social element. So any company which is actually environmentally sustainable, any economic practices which are environmentally sustainable, ecologically sustainable, socially sustainable, technologically sustainable. So these are the sources of value. And I think, I believe there are certain elements within the budget. If you look at, for example, the incentives for green investment, the tax incentive for green investment. I think these are things which actually create high value economic activities. And there are some elements within the budget. But of course, as Dr. Sharmila and Prof. Rosli already mentioned, we are at a level, we, we cannot actually accelerate at a very rapid speed. And I think the initiative that we have set, we have seen the budget, probably these are the, probably the starting groundwork, obviously moving towards an high economy. Because we need to have innovation products which are seen as the rest of the world is innovative. Our investment should be innovative. Our people should be creative service-minded and very efficient. And these are things that comes from the training and things. And you can see there are a lot of emphasis in the budget on developing talent, developing top talent, developing our young generation. And these are things that create value in the economic activities. So thank you. Do we have any other question? One last question. So one chance, any question? If not, then we will be closing. And I would like to give opportunity to Prof. Uh, our team, Professor Aini. Okay, thank you. Thank you all for staying and, uh, right until the end. I would like to thank you, the panel, also, and Dr. Nizam as moderators, all the lecturers as well. Uh, most importantly, you all. Now, um, I would like to say this. Um, Actually, we were thinking because you have a Bachelor of Entrepreneurship, right? And also, we have a lot of entrepreneurship courses within the Silver Star. Sapatonia, right? Actually, I would like to see where you have your entrepreneurship day, right? And I and uh, Dr. Mizuan is not here. I am actually one of the students who actually, I think there are about five entrepreneurship courses that you all have to take. I, I think there is one introduction to entrepreneurship and so on and so forth. So, by right, we should have an entrepreneurship day where you 
alkohol, tapi dia nggak harus buat jual lain. Semua. Burger, right? we can think of things. Okay? So, I hope that that is something that can help you. Um, you ask me, you, you ask me, uh, you ask just now, what does the faculty can do? Right? What the faculty can do is, you have a proposal, you give it to me, I will do that. Okay? Nak jumpa siapa? Nak jumpa tekun? Okay? I do have contact. Alright? Now, um, cuma tadi, um, somebody was asking me because we want to continue this kind of forum. Now, if I were to invite or manage to invite, invite KJ, who do you like? You know the thing is, you don't know who KJ is, alamak! You don't know who KJ is, adoy! Okay, so I will work towards that. If you have any speakers that you would like to invite, just tell me and then you know what I mean. Tak tahu KJ siapa, alamak! Okay. Selain dari kerja, okay. Alam. Maybe we will invite one and the mana. Ah, I know you are going to do so. Ten. Dah. Ten house pun tak payah. Okay. So maybe if you have ideas, you just inform us and then we will do that. Anyway, thank you. I'm sorry we are not able to provide you lunch next time. Okay? Alright. Nanti you check out again your lecturers. Next time, provide me. Okay? So, thank you all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.